Yes, <clears throat> Mr. Ahmed Abdul Jalil. Yes, here. Zuhair. Yes, Zuhair is here. Taha. Yes. Abdullah Al Abdul Mohsen. Abdullah Muhammad Al Abdul Mohsen. Abdullah Al Ali. Yes, here. Muhammad Al Bush. Yes, here. Sultan Al Dosri. Sultan Al Dosri. Dal Al Gabr. Yes, here. Yes, yes. Ahmed Al Ghamdi. Ahmed Al Ghamdi. Uh, yes, here. Muhammad Al Hazmi. Yes, present. Muhammad Al Humedan. Yes, here. Mishal. Yes. Hassan Al Musallam. Yes. Abdul Rahman Al Mushrif. Sorry, Abdul Rahim Al Mushrif. Abdul Rahim Al Mushrif. Abdul Majid Al Mutari. Yes, present. Abdul Rahman Al Najib. Yes, here. Habit Al Khaitani. Yes, Dr. I'm here. Ramsey Al Rati. Yes. Nawaf al Saleh. Yes, Doctor. Ibrahim al Shamesi. Yes, Doctor. Present. Present, Doctor. Yes, yes thank you. Sultan Dusir, Doctor. Ali al Shams. Yes. Abdullah al Shahri. Abdullah al Shahri. Abdullah al Shuair. Yes, present. Ali Al Tamimi. Yes, present. Saif Al Zehrani. Yes. Hussein Al Zaki. Yes, here. Hassan Bashamah. Yes. Abdul Rauf Ibrahim. Yes, doctor. Basil. Mashabi. Yes, Doctor. Abdul Malik Muhatib. Yes, Doctor. Abdullah Radwan. Yes, Doctor. Here. Okay. Anyone? Doctor 29. 29? Abdul Rahim. Okay. Anyone else? 19. Al Abdul Hassan Abdullah. Okay. Anyone else? 22. 22. So anyone else who whose name is not in the class roster? No. Okay. So <clears throat> as I told you, I took this attendance manually because of the new class roster. But from the next class onwards, I will take it from the Zoom electronically. I will generate the login and log off sheet. And please kindly note that the student you have to attain at least 25 minutes. Otherwise, I cannot give you the attendance. If you just log in and log off for five, 10 minutes, you will not get the attendance. So please, you have to attend at least 25 minutes. Then only you, you will, I will give you the attendance. And uh, uh, this attendance sheets, uh, I will post it weekly on the Blackboard, okay? So you can have a look at uh, your attendance sheet. Now, the second thing is uh, regarding the uh, class interaction. So today I have two questions for you. So please be ready. Uh, I will start a poll. And for the first poll question, I'm giving you one minute. So please answer it. Your time starts now. Please select one answer. One minute.
20 seconds. Ten seconds. Okay, time is up. So the answer to this question is as the distance D between the static charge Q and the observation point P increases, the electrostatic field E, it decreases, but it decreases as a function of one over D or one over D square. D squared. It is one over D squared. Yes. Doctor. So, uh, next question. So two questions for today. Time starts now. This is for only 40 seconds because it is just true or false. Only 40 seconds. Twenty seconds. Ten seconds. Three seconds. Okay, time, sir. So the question was the electrostatic field lines of a point charge. It's a positive charge and it is placed at origin will be radial and will it point towards the charge or away from the charge? Outside. Away. Away. Outside. away because it's a positive charge. So the electric field will be away. Okay. Okay. So thank you. So now let's start our class. So the answer is false, right? Yes. The answer is false. Are these questions graded? Yes, they are graded. Because in the first class, when uh, in the introduction class, I shared with you the grading policy, right? So in the grading policy, you have the class interaction plus attendance, which constitutes how much? Uh, if I am not mistaken, let me just quickly check. It constitutes 6%. It's called performance, 6%. So it has class interaction plus attendance, okay? So the class interactions can, will be in the form of these kind of very quick, small questions, or it can be an oral question which I can ask and I can, uh, uh, and I can tell you to write the answer in a private chat, okay? So these, I think I have already announced that. Uh, but doctor, I thought uh, the interaction uh, uh, during the explanation when you are presenting the lecture. Yeah, so the thing is, you know, when I use the word class interaction, I, I, I verbally explained the meaning of that, right? So if I write, you know, poll questions plus this questions and answers, it will, it will, it will be confusing for all of us. So please keep this in mind that class interactions, it can be oral questions whose answers you can, you have to write it in your private chat window or it can be these kind of poll questions. Okay. Okay, doctor, could you make it this uh, for this time as a bonus for those people answer the true? Because uh, I didn't uh, understand that the way it's okay. like that question. Okay, sure, no problem. It's it's fine. So I can take this, uh, you know, uh, and I can give this as a uh, uh, say. Let's let's see. I will. I, will, I cannot. I cannot make a decision right now. Let me give you the results. See the results of these kind of poll questions. I will post it at the end, and it will be on the blackboard. Okay. So let me uh, think about it, and I will get back to you. Look, okay. sir. Yes. Do you think is any a little uh, unfair for to give a grade just for uh, 
uh, students who answered correct. Because, I mean, it's the first time we take this course. So if mm -hmm. we lose marks in this way, I, I didn't know. It's something like unfair. No, Mr. Michal, uh, why do you think it is unfair? See, whatever we are teaching in the class, and I'm not going to ask the question, you know, I, I'm not going to bring you a question in the poll, which I taught, you know, three or four classes ago. No, I will just ask you the questions in the poll maximum from the last two classes. That's it. Or last, most of the time, it will be the last class. So this will be like a brush up to just you quickly review. And the questions will be very simple. And the objective is we want the student to follow and don't take this online classes just as, you know, uh, a class, you know, just, you know, logging in and sitting and, you know, just logging off. So we want you to, you know, be interactive, be proactive. So that's why this will be like a quick review for you, you know, before you come for the class. And, you know, every instructor is doing this kind of class interactions in different ways. Okay, so let's uh, start our class. We are already late, so, okay. Okay, so, so we were in lecture three. So where we looked at the expression of the electrostatic field due to an infinitely long straight line charge carrying uniform charge density rho L. And we derived this expression. And if you remember, this is the expression. So it is rho L over two pi epsilon rho. Rho L over two pi epsilon rho. So this is the electric field at this observation point P. And this we, I explained this in the last class. This you can think it from a simple analogy. Why we have the electric field only uh, in the row direction. Why we have only the vector of electric field in the row direction because of the symmetry. This is called a symmetry. Because as a, if you take a sp small point charge Above the origin, a small point charge below will be definitely there. So they will cancel out and therefore you get only rho. So this I have explained. Now another next, next uh, observation, if you see the electric field is proportional to one over rho. That is rho is nothing but it's the perpendicular distance from a uh, of the observation point to the origin. It's a perpendicular distance. Guys, this is very important. Okay, so a one over rho is the perpendicular distance. Uh, what is this perpendicular distance? Again, I'm repeating. This rho is the perpendicular distance from the line to the observation point, rho. So it is one over rho. So unlike Point charge, in point charge, it was, just now we got this question, it is d squared, so that it will be distance squared. But for a line, it is only one over distance. Now, this is a note which, you know, you can, uh, you know, remember, because this becomes very handy when you solve any examples of line charges. What it says, that if the line charge is not along the x-axis, okay? So if the line charge is somewhere else, it is placed, then always- You mean, you mean z-axis? Yeah, uh, it's not you along the z-axis because we placed it on the z-axis, right? If yeah. it is not on the z-axis. Okay. If it is placed like this, or if it is placed like this, then in that case, always remember rho is the perpendicular distance from the line, which is our source, because line charge is our source, which is generating the electrostatic field to the observation point and wherever is the observation point. Okay, this is one thing. Now here, this was a rho, right? 
a row now here what will be a row remember a row is the unit vector along that distance directed from the line charge which is the source to the observation point so here in our case this was the perpendicular distance right and a row is nothing but it is the unit vector which is along that distance and it is directed from the line charge to the observation point so its direction is like this so this this is the direction so rho is always the perpendicular distance and a rho is the unit vector of this perpendicular distance but its direction will be from the line to the observation point so this will be the direction and a very easy way okay uh, uh we will we will take an uh, example uh, at the end for this uh, you know for a line charge which is not placed uh, uh along the z axis and also if it is not infinite then what we should do yes mr sultan yes uh, if the line was on the x axis mm -hmm. will uh, rho still be the the perpendicular distance yes this is what i'm saying if the line is placed on x axis then what we need what do you need to do you look at your observation point and from that observation point you find the perpendicular distance to your line that will become your row and whatever is that perpendicular distance your unit vector a rho will be the unit vector along that perpendicular distance and its direction will be from the line charge to the point okay yeah clear okay so so this is this is an example of an infinite line charge so guys uh, just take a note Uh, that in your textbook the textbook did it for a finite line charge see the textbook did it for a finite line charge so this is a finite line charge finite i mean to say it's uh, it's it's only this much length from a to b and your observation point is here p so what will the finite so this you can go through from the textbook how it is solved again it is the same general use the general expression find dl find the distance vector r then put it in your electric field so this is done for you and this is your answer so for the finite then charge a straight line charge is there in your textbook and infinite i did it in the class okay so either based on the problem you can straight away use this formulas if you have a finite line charge or if you have an infinite line charge or if you want you can go ahead and use the general formula and i have an example where uh, you know how you can use the general formula i am i will i will show it to you it's at the end so this is the line charge okay if you let's take that example yeah this is the example now what is this example it is saying that you need to develop an expression for the electric field at the observation point p for a straight line charge of uniform line charge density rho zero so this is a finite line charge it is placed along the x axis this is the point a and this is the point b and it's of uniform charge density rho zero and it is placed in free space that's why it is epsilon zero and your observation point is p so how do you do that so it's up to you either you can go and straight away if you want if you if you can if you remember this expression for the finite line charge then you can use this expression where you can get your alpha 1 and alpha 2 and then substitute you will get the answer else if you don't remember 
just use the general expression so what is the general expression this is the general expression e bar is rho l uh, sorry uh, rho l dl over 4 pi epsilon r over r cube right so let's do this so what will happen so in our case so let me just make it small so that everyone can we can we can uh, see this yes so now what is your r dash r dash is a distance unit. vector yes, from yes it's a distance vector so what we what you need to do here you need to okay so let me just draw this here so this is my observation so this is my x axis and this is my line this is a this is b and this is y and this is my point p okay and now in order to do the integration you need to first define a small infinite elemental length okay so this is elemental length dl dash since it is along the x axis it will be dx dash now what will be this distance we need to assume so let that this distance be since it's along the x axis so it is x dash so now what will be my distance vector r dash my distance vector is from here and pointing here point of observation pointing towards the point of observation right so it is from this elemental length to the point of observation clear now what will be this r it is nothing but this is x dash this length is x dash and it is in the opposite direction so that's why it is minus x dash ax so very similar to how we did it for the infinite line and my dl dash is nothing but my dx dash so i got r and i got l uh, sorry dl which is nothing but d sorry uh, let me just erase this uh, d dash will not come here dl so dl is nothing but my dx dash because we use dashes for representing source locations done substitute e is equal to integral rho l dl over 4 pi epsilon not because it's free space r bar over r cube so it is equal to minus integral now you need to integrate this what are the uh, unit this limits of this integration from a to b so from a to b rho, rho l dx dash over 4 pi epsilon not and r bar is minus ax so minus is coming out x bar uh, x dash ax this is my r bar divided by the magnitude of my distance which is x dash q now just simplify this you will get the answer and the answer is rho l over 4 pi epsilon not 1 over b minus 1 over a and it has only ax component doctor yes uh, why the distance here is not uh, perpendicular to the line which line the the straight line the charge charge line this is the distance r right yes yeah this is your r from here to here right Mm. now what we are doing because we need to integrate it so for integration for mathematics we need to first define a small elemental length and then this elemental length we have to add which is we need to integrate but that elemental length we need to first define its location so since it's along the x axis that's why we defined it as x dash so the distance of this dl from my point p is x dash no but uh, previously you said the distance is perpendicular to the line 
Sorry? You said the distance yeah, is perpendicular this is, to the line. Yes, this is this is not, see, this is not rho. I'm not defining this as rho. Am I defining this as rho? No, no. No, that's why. So it's not rho. It's just for our mathematical analysis. See, in the infinite case, the line was like this. My observation point was like this. And therefore, this elemental length, I found this as my distance vector r. And what I did is this, we need to define its location. So at the origin, I defined its location as z dash. And then, sorry, uh, I will just remove this. And this is my observation point P. And then this, I assumed it as low, which is the perpendicular distance. See, perpendicular distance. But here, it's not, it's not required because your distance vector is nothing but it is simply minus x dash ax, which is this one. Got it? So this here, we are using the general expression. Got it? So in the general expression, there is no, what I said, perpendicular distance or these things. If you are using the already derived expression somewhere, this one, if you are using this somewhere, for example, I can give you an example. So I placed now this infinite line along x axis, okay, along x axis. And this is my observation point P. So which is, this is one and this is three. Okay, and let us assume that it has some line, you know, this uh, uh, charge density rho L. Now, what will be the answer for this one? Let us assume this as y. So what will be the answer for this one? So here, you do not need to go and use the general formula because it's an infinite line, right? And I, I already know what is E bar of my infinite line? It is rho L over two pi epsilon rho times A rho, right? So I can, straight away apply this formula for this problem. Now, the only thing which I need to keep in mind is that rho is the perpendicular distance of this line to my point. So this will be your rho. And what is your A rho? A rho will be the, the unit vector of the rho. Of this distance and it will be pointing in this direction, right? From your charge to your observation point. Plus, substitute here. So it's line charge density rho rho L. So it is rho L over two pi epsilon. Now what is rho? Rho is nothing but three. See here, it's three. So three times this direction. This is your A rho direction. What is this direction? That's it. Got it? Yes. So this is an example where I am using, I'm using the already derived expression of my infinite line. And just using that. And so here I'm, I need to just identify what is rho, identify what is a rho, which I have explained it to you. So you just apply here. Clear? So, so this is for a line. Now let's quickly go for a sheet now. 
so in a line charge now we will go to a surface chart which is whose example is a sheet so now if you see here so now we are trying to derive the electric field due to an infinite sheet so if you see here this is a sheet so it's a sheet it's and it's a infinite sheet and it ha it is carrying a uniform surface charge density rho s so infinite sheet and if you see here look look here so the sheet is nothing but it is in your xy plane so it is in the xy plane and it is infinite in all direction x y both and it is infinite and it has a surface charge density rho s now how to get the answer for this infinite sheet again we follow the same thing first let's take a small elemental surface ds so therefore this small elemental surface we let us assume that this is our observation point 00z okay uh, by the way guys this observation point is given to us so it's it's in the example because uh, this pic, uh, uh, this photo is given in the example we did not make it it is given in the example so we this is our observation point 00z that means this height is z and this is my distance vector right and it is pointing from my source to my observation point r and this is my rho dash this is the rho dash and this is phi dash so it this rho dash phi dash this is actually giving you the location of my elemental surface now once we know we just go ahead so once i know the small surface ds can i find the elemental charge of the small surface yes so dq is rho s ds now what we need is we just need to substitute in our general expression which is e bar is equal to integral over s rho s ds over 4 pi epsilon r bar over r q or i can do the following i can also say e bar is nothing but integral of d e bar so first i am finding d e so what will be your d e your d e will be nothing but instead of considering the whole complete integration of your elemental charge dq we will just first find the electric field of this elemental charge dq r bar over r now once i do this then if i substitute here i will get my electric field. so this is what i am finding dq over 4 pi epsilon not times r bar over r so both are correct you do not you know either you can separate and first find the electric field because of this elemental uh, surface ds and then once you find that electric field then integrate the electric field over the whole surface okay or you just use this integral over s and continue it's up to you so i'm just trying to show you different ways so this is the next other way so it is r bar over r cube now what is your r bar here yes what is your r bar first let's go in we need to go in this direction and then we need to go up right then i can get this r so it is minus rho dash a rho right because i'm going in this direction and my a rho is in this direction so minus rho dash a rho plus z is 
So minus rho dash a rho plus z a z. And its magnitude is rho dash square plus z square under root. Instead of putting under root, I'm saying one over two. And since cube is there, so that's why it is three over two. So if you see the electric field is now made up of two components, a rho and a z. That's why I'm saying it is made up of two components, a rho and a z. Now these magnitudes of these components we need to find. And we will also see whether they both will exist or both will, or anyone will cancel as we saw it in the line charge. So now again from our analysis. So if you remember our analysis, for the line charge, we can do a similar analysis here. So what is what it is saying? That for any infinite sheet of charge, for a small elemental charge dq, which is rho s ds, there will exist another elemental charge dq, which will be in the completely opposite direction and located the locations. So this distance and this distance row, these are all there. They will. So, so the conclusion is there will be, you can, there can exist a charge DQ, which will be completely opposite to where this DS is, or sorry, this DS. So this DS, which gives you DQ, there is a charge, which is completely, sorry, there is a small elemental, uh, surface another ds which is completely opposite so this will also have a charge q and now we need to find at point p so what we are seeing we are trying to see what will be the char what will be the field of this dq so the field of this dq you know at our point so this is along z axis so this is our point so it will point like this this will point like this and then if we open, uh, we, we, we write these vectors in the form of d e and d rho, d e and d rho, then d rho d rho cancels and only you will get d c. If this is very similar to the line charge, okay? So I don't think, you know, it should confuse, it, it, should, it should be confusing. Uh, doctor, yes. How are they completely opposite when they both push uh, the point up above? See, what we are doing is, you know, this sheet, we, it is made up of infinite number of DSs, right? Can you see this? They are made up of infinite number of DS, elemental surfaces, and this is what we are integrating, correct? All right. Yeah, so what I am saying is, if this is your z axis, and this is your observation point, then what I'm saying is, if I take this as my ds, the small elemental surface, then there will exist an another small elemental surface here, a completely opposite to it, right? Forget about that this is a surface. Just think that this is a small elemental charge Q, D, you know, small elemental charge DQ, which is generating an electric field DE. This is also small elemental charge DQ, which is generating an electric field DE. And I want to see what will be the electric field at this point. So for this elemental charge will give me the ele electric field DE in this direction and this charge if i view at point this point it will give me in this direction now if i write this de in terms of this is d rho and this is dz uh sorry So this is 
D E rho and this is D E Z. For this one, if you name it as one, so this will be one and one. This will be one. Now for this, sorry. If you name this as one, then this will be one and this will be one, this will be one. If you name this as two, then this will be the D E rho two and this will be the D E Z two. So this, this completely opposite. So therefore they cancel out. And the only thing available is this one, DZ. Clear? Did you get my point? So this is just by analysis. We are now not considering the sheet. We are just considering a small elemental charge and think it as a point charge. So the point charge electric field will be radial. And my observation point is this. So therefore it is radial like this. And for this one, it is radial like this. Now, if I decompose them, this, this cancels and only the Z component will appear. Similarly, you can take any way. You can take here, you can take here. Again, you will get one electric field component of this one in this direction, electric field component of this one in this direction. So they cancel and the only the Z direction will be added. So the conclusion is the A rho component will cancel out and only the Z component will stay. So this is from the analysis. That's why here, if you see, I am dropping this just by analysis, but if you don't want to drop, no problem. Just go ahead and keep it as it is and do the integration. And you will see that the integration, when you, when you do the integration, then this part will automatically vanishes. It becomes zero. So I am not doing it. I'm just dropping it and I'm just taking this, this one and continuing, but you can do it at home. Now how I'm doing it for DEZ, Similarly, you can do if do it for DE row and then check whether the DE row integration becomes zero or not. So this is my DEZ. So this is my DE. So I'm just taking the Z part from here. So DEZ will be rho S DS times Z over four pi epsilon rho dash square plus Z square to the power of three by two. This is DEZ. You can similarly, you can take out your DE row and then you can do the integration. So I'm just uh, say, uh, trying to replace the DS, okay? Because now I'm, I need to do the surface integration. So the surface integration in the cylindrical coordinate, what is this surface, this elemental surface? So this elemental surface will be d phi d rho. So the surface will be rho d phi d rho. It's this surface. You know, this one. Remember, so we took, it is like this. It is like this. So this is the elemental surface we need to take. And this elemental surface is rho dash, sorry, rho d phi d rho. This is the, so I'm just substituting ds as rho d phi d rho and I got my d is. So now integrate it to get easy. So it is the surface integral of this one and if you do it, so here you have to integrate it over d phi and you have to integrate it over d rho. And since it's already the component of z, that's why easy, that's 
therefore you don't need to write az here so just find the integration of this so it is phi and rho so phi will take the complete units uh, so the complete limit 0 to 2 pi and rho will take the complete limits which is 0 to infinity because it's a infinite sheet and if you substitute this here and then simplify it you will see that this is your answer so your e bar is rho s over 2 epsilon so e bar e bar is just rho s over 2 epsilon az this is your easy okay see here so this is my easy so therefore my e bar is e rho plus easy right but this went to zero from our analysis so it has only z component so therefore here my e bar is this so this is the electric field created by an infinite sheet. And if you see here, it's a constant. See, it doesn't depend on the distance of your observation point, where your observe, how much far is your observation point from the sheet? Nothing is there, it's a constant. So for point charge, it was one over D square. For a line charge, it is like one over D. And for surface, it's a constant. So how does it look, look, look like? See, I have 2D view. If this is my sheet and this is my z-axis, then the electric field will be like this. So here, it will be rho s over 2 epsilon az. And on this side, it will be rho s over 2 epsilon times minus az. If this is my origin. So this is my origin. So here it is, it is minus AZ, that's why this minus A. And this is the, for the sheet. And in general, because we placed it in the XY plane, suppose if it is placed in any plane, then not to worry. You can use this general formula. So the general formula is low rho S over two epsilon time AN. AN is the unit vector. And what is that unit vector? It is nothing but it's the unit normal to the sheet. So whichever unit vector is normal to the sheet, that will be your A. Okay? So here we placed it in XY plane. That's why AZ was the unit normal. If we place it in the XZ plane, if we place it in the XZ plane, then what will happen? Y is the normal vector. Y will be the normal vector. So if this is my origin, this is your X and this is your Z. Uh, then, sorry, it will be, uh, okay, just a second. Let me not do it in this manner. Let me do it in this manner. So this is X, this is, y x y just a second i'm looking at the right right coordinates so so this will be x y z so we are placing it in the xz plane so the normal will be y. So therefore, this az will now be a y. Okay. So I think, guys, we will uh, stop here, and uh, in the next class, uh, we will go to the Gauss law. Okay. So we have a small a example. We will take this example, and then we will go for the Gauss law. Okay. So. Anything you want to ask? Okay then, so we will meet on
ट्यूजडे थैंक यू